Draghi is the leader that has dominated European politics for decades. Now, just weeks before he hands over the reins of power, we meet uh, the EU Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker here at the headquarters of the EU Commission in Brussels to discuss in this uncut interview his legacy for Europe. So, Mr. President, many thanks for being with us. It's my pleasure. This was a big week for the EU Commission as the President-elect, Mrs. Ursula von der Leyen, unveiled her new commission. So, how do you feel about it? And when you remember your first days in the presidency, do you feel a bit of nostalgia? Uh, yes, I know. I'm, I'm happy to leave. And I'm, I'm happy not to stay. Uh, I, I do think that uh, the team presented by uh, President von der Leyen is an excellent team mainly because seven, six, eight uh, of my commissioners are still members of the new uh, commission. She did as well. And one of your closest aides here in the EU Commission, Margarita Sinas, got promoted as a vice president of the new uh, EU Commission. But there is a lot of controversy around new portfolios and new names of the portfolios, especially the one that uh, Mr. Schinas is expected to get, this protecting the European no. way of life. Do you agree with this term? No. What is a European way of life for you? A European way of life is uh, putting together our main talents and energies. And included in that uh, room is the fact that uh, you have to respect the others independently from their colour and independently from their uh, initial home state. Uh, knowing Margaret as well, because I, I was in daily contact with him, uh, I know that uh, the title is not corresponding to his uh, own values. And I think that this uh, will have to be changed. So, uh, as uh, the president-elect said, it's about migration, but, of course, you don't agree that uh, uh, no. we should be a European way of life should no, be protected. No, I don't like the idea to oppose the European way of life to migration. No, accepting those coming from far away in Europe is part of the European way of life. It should be uh, precise. But uh, let's stick with migration as uh, it was an issue that dominated your time uh, in office and it continues to dominate no. the agenda. So do you feel that you lost control of the situation? Um, I myself know, but member states have lost the control. When I was campaigning back in 2014, I was uh, bringing the attention of the general public to the migration issue because it was foreseeable that something was, would, uh, would happen. In 2015, uh, the Commission made uh, proposals, mainly as far as resettlement and relocation uh, are concerned. This was a decision by the Council of Interior Ministers, but some four, three, four, five countries are not accepting the rule the Council was giving uh, to them. When I'm having a look in the Hungarian press, the, the Commission is criticised, but in fact, the members have to be criticised. They took the decision, it was a right uh, decision, and it's not a, a controversy between uh, the Commission and Hungary and, and others, it's a controversial material between the Council, member states, and some of the member states. It was a wise uh, proposal to, to uh, apply solidarity to uh, the uh, migration crisis, it worked in parts, it didn't work uh, totally, but there is no other way than to distribute the um, refugees amongst all the countries. But the crisis is still ongoing. We see already the situation getting worse in the Mediterranean. How do you see it going on like this when the member states that you refer to uh, refuse? But I, I was feel... asking member states, those who were in, in the reluctant uh, camp, to take on their territory uh, children children being here in Europe without parents, without uh, family. Do you really think that in Poland there would be um, sweet demonstrations against the fact that the Polish nation is taking uh, uh, children on its uh, territory? No, no, no. We, we, we have uh, to remember us that if you want the world 
to become a better place to live, then you have to love the others. Do you see uh, a crisis similar to the one we saw in 2015 happening again in Europe? No, I don't think so. In 2015, we had a situation which was, uh, by historical uh, parameters, a uh, highly exceptional uh, uh, event. Uh, countries were dealing with this uh, event in a different way. Germany was not opening its borders, but was not closing its borders. And had it closed its borders, we would have had a stock of refugees in Hungary. Hungary would never have been able uh, to deal with. But I do think that uh, the situation has changed. Uh, if you are having a look in depth to the numbers of refugees coming from Uh, uh, through the Mediterranean, mainly the Aegean uh, Sea, you can uh, see that uh, the numbers have dramatically decreased. But, uh, But I'm, I'm not someone who is saying that I'm not concerned by what is happening now because the numbers in recent weeks are increasing and uh, we, we have to, to uh, be aware that the situation could easily uh, explode. explode. Uh, did all this uh, way of responding to, to this crisis and also Merkel's reaction to open the doors of Germany, did she all this... She didn't open the doors, she did not close the doors. That's the difference. But did this help uh, leaders like Salvini rise, finally, in Europe? Where is Mr. Salvini now? I think he left the government. He left the government, okay. Good news. He's not the only one, though. No, 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 but it's, it's too easy to um, develop a demagogic uh, uh, speech, discourse, uh, explanation, argumentation. These are poor people. Not all of them are entitled to stay in, in, in Europe. There we have a real problem because it's difficult to manage the, the returns to the uh, countries of, of origin. But the fact that in Hungary, in Italy, Some are saying that uh, the policy of my commission would be to open the doors broadly for Islam, terrorists, is in fact a sin. It's a sin. But uh, let me take you now to another ongoing crisis that we don't know when and how it will end. And of course, I'm talking about Brexit. Do you consider Brexit as the biggest failure of your term that you didn't manage to keep a country in the bloc for the first but time? It's a tragedy and it's a failure. But I have to say, I don't think that this is mine. Because I didn't decide to have this referendum. I was not intervening in the referendum uh, explanation because the Prime Minister Cameron asked me not to intervene because this uh, has to be considered as an inner British problem. We had negotiated a, an agreement with uh, Cameron on different points. This uh, agreement with Cameron didn't play any role during uh, the referendum uh, campaign. The British were told for more than 40 years that yes, they are in, but they don't want to share all the policies uh, which have been decided uh, by the European Union. The British, since the very beginning, were part-time Europeans. What we need are full-time uh, Europeans. And uh, it's uh, this Brexit from its genesis, is that English genesis? Maybe it's Greek. Well, um, it has to do with the fact that not a single government was openly defending and explaining the place of uh, Britain in the European uh, Union. And if you are uh, telling the people over decades that this is not exactly what we wanted, don't be surprised if a referendum Uh, is uh, answered in a negative uh, uh, way. Uh, by the way, I was probably the only one who was not surprised by the outcome. I, 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 I was. That. Yeah, I expected that be, be, because this matraquage, as the French are saying, repeating day after day that well, okay, we are there, but we don't want to be there, is producing obvious results. But in the chaos right now in the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. should Britain leave uh, the bloc finally? 
Yeah, that's a, a decision to be taken by our British uh, friends. My impression is that they want uh, to leave, uh, according, by the way, to the result of uh, the referendum. But um, this is a lose-lose situation. More losses for Britain, but also uh, losses for, for the rest of the European Union. Uh, your uh, colleague, EU Council President, uh, Donald Tusk, has spoken of a special place in hell for those who didn't have a plan to carry uh, out Brexit safely. Uh, is there such a place for whom? David Cameron, Boris Johnson or Theresa May? By opposition to my good friend Donald Tusk, I don't believe in hell. But if, but if, if, you, if there is somebody to blame for this situation... No, 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 but I, I, I wouldn't put uh, someone in hell. Uh, because uh, they were doing their best, mainly Theresa May. We, we negotiated not a deal with Theresa May, but a treaty. This expression, deal, is not reflecting the ambition of the text. It's a treaty. And uh, she did well. And uh, I would have liked uh, the British Parliament to accept this withdrawal uh, agreement. Things would be easier. What would you say to David Cameron if you saw him now? I would like to remind him that we had always good personal relations, although he was against my nomination as uh, uh, president of the commission. I met him the day after my appointment and uh, we agreed uh, to work in the best uh, possible uh, uh, conditions. But I think it was a major mistake to put such a complicated question to referendum. The withdrawal agreement we have concluded with uh, Prime Minister May, that's seven, eight hundred pages. Did every British citizen participating in the referendum know what this was all about? No. But uh, let's leave a bit uh, the failure of uh, the EU, uh, Brexit, and let's go to something that you said... It's the failure of Britain, not of the European Union. OK, but uh, you said that your biggest achievement uh, all these years was to keep Greece in the yeah. Eurozone. This was also a very uh, serious crisis. But finally, was it you to, to save Greece or to keep Greece in the Eurozone? Because, you know, after, after this crisis, there were many yeah, that yeah, claimed yeah. to have yeah, yeah. saved Greece. Um, I'm reading the memoirs of my uh, former colleagues, and sometimes I have the impression that I had nothing to do with... Uh, the uh, answer we brought to the weak uh, uh, crisis, because it was a crisis. No, what we did against the uh, willingness of uh, more than three or four member states was to make use of one of the provisions of the treaty, saying that the Commission is in charge of the general interest of the European Union. That was the mandate. I uh, uh, was... Uh, trying to um, fulfill with life. Had the Commission said, OK, you are of the opinion that Greece should leave, the Commission would have failed to its uh, most noble uh, mission. We have, as a Commission, to keep uh, countries together. And in a way, in, in a certain way, in a real way, uh, Greece was saved thanks to the efforts of the Greek uh, uh, people, mainly of the poorest part of the Greek people, because there were a lot of poor people in Greece. I was always trying to respect, f to fully respect the dignity of the Greek people and of the Greek uh, nation, and we were doing everything uh, what could be done in order to keep Greece um, in the Euro area. Would we have accepted that Greece would leave the euro, that would have been the beginning of the end of the euro. But there is a perception to some people outside Greece that they paid a lot to keep Greece. So, finally, how much did the European taxpayers pay to keep Greece in the eurozone? I didn't know nothing. How do you say that? It was like... Yeah, yeah. We were so offering guarantees, things like that, but uh, till now the European taxpayer has didn't put one pence 
in the, in the salvation of, uh, of Greece. So, if we see it uh, a bit broadly, all these crises that we are talking about, like refugee crisis, Brexit, or uh, the Greek crisis, Eurozone crisis, uh, all of them have brought in the forefront populist leaders. So, if you look back, would you do something differently in order to avoid? Could this be avoided, finally? But I, I'm asking myself uh, what uh, uh, kind of weaknesses uh, the Commission and myself we have shown. One has to uh, have in mind that we had to tackle what I called a poly crisis. We had uh, migration, we had Greece, we had terrorist attack in, in Paris and elsewhere. We had the Catalonian uh, crisis. Uh, we had uh, the appearance on the international uh, scenery of uh, uh, the uh, American president, and, and, and. And it's difficult to explain that you are in control of everything because you can't be in control of uh, everything. We had too many crises to face. Uh, let's now talk about some colleagues of yours. And of course, I will choose some of the most controversial. I will start by... Uh, yeah, controversial. Controversial, oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know, uh, one of them is the Hungarian Prime Minister, Viktor Orban, who did what he wanted with migration. Uh, he ran uh, an anti-Brussels campaign, huge anti-Brussels campaign, and uh, against you personally. And also we see some evidence that some EU funds were misused uh, in his country. So do you feel defeated? by him? Um, no, that's what he wanted, but he didn't uh, defeat me because although we had huge differences of views, we have a good personal relationship, allowing me from time to time to joke about, uh, uh, about him. I, I was admiring Viktor Orban by the end of the 80s because then he was resisting to the Soviet occupation of uh, Hungary. He was a hero. And uh, so I, I, always, uh, I was always respecting him, highly respecting him. Then at a certain juncture, he turned differently and he became less European and he became aggressive against the Commission. Although the Commission has done, my Commission, I have to say, has done a lot for Hungary, and he's accepting that privately, but not uh, publicly. But is he a European democratic leader for you, in your perception? He's not Hungarian leader. Which means? Which means that his first concern is not Europe, but his uh, country. And that is a major mistake. If you are only interested in your country, if you are feeding the sentiments which do exist in your country without taking care of the broader European uh, uh, context, then you are not a European leader, but you are a national leader. But how do you feel that the former justice minister, for example, of Hungary was offered a portfolio of enlargement and neighborhood uh, that means that he has to also safeguard all the rule of law and this thing? What, what kind of a message is this? I was not appointing him. So you disagree with this decision? No, no, no. I will never criticize the new president of the Commission because I know the difficulties of uh, the job. But we will see uh, in the European Parliament if this is agreeable or not. Uh, Donald Trump, he called you as a nasty and brutal killer. Yeah. How would you describe him? In a few words. No, I, I, I took this as a compliment. Because he was saying different things. He was saying, I love Jean-Claude. Nobody in Europe is saying, I love Jean-Claude. Uh, certainly not uh, my good friend uh, Viktor Orban. He was saying that uh, I'm a tough negotiator and, and in, during a press conference we had at the uh, Rose Garden, he was saying I would prefer Jean-Claude being the negotiator for, for the US than to be the negotiator for, uh, for Europe. This is a series of compliments. Tell me one I'm word accepting. that you would describe Donald Trump. Outspoken. And uh, your successor, Ursula von der Leyen, do you think she is the first female president of the EU Commission? But is her nomination a blow to any effort that the EU has done to democratically legitimize uh, the EU leadership? I like Ursula. I, I know her for, I think, 20 years. We had uh, regular contacts. She's OK. But the way she was brought in the office was not 
highly transparent. And the European Parliament did not play its role. Mm -hmm. The European Parliament was always claiming that only a Spitzenkandidat should become uh, president of the Commission, and the European Parliament was not playing its role, and it was accepting, by the way, that the European Council was directly appointing two vice presidents of the Commission, and that is not the business of the European uh, Council. They tried it with me, I refused that. Let's uh, go to something more personal. Can you share with us a moment that, uh, behind some closed doors, that you will never forget, that nobody ever heard of it, and it was for you like a game over? I had uh, not a difficult moment, but an uh, interesting moment with President Hollande, because um, I wanted Pierre Moscovici as a uh, commissioner, as a commissioner for economic and financial affairs, and he didn't like this idea because he saw the trick, because the trick was to ask a French to explain to the French that deficits, that, that public deficits are not uh, the avenue to be taken, and he wanted Boscovici to become a commissioner for energy. I didn't take that route, but the Ecfin Avenue. And a last question. Uh, as a president, what would you fear being remembered for, and what would you hope to be remembered for? Uh, these are questions you are putting to me, but these are questions I've never put in to me. I, I would like others to say that I spent more than huge efforts to keep the European family together. So, Mr. President, many thanks for this interview here on Euronews. Many thanks to you.